Hello everyone, welcome to Family Tree DNA webinars. My name is Elise Friedman and I am the webinar coordinator for Family Tree DNA. Today's webinar is the ideal life of a Family Tree DNA kit. Uh, this webinar tonight is basically going to explain the general process that a Family Tree DNA kit follows from the time that you order a DNA kit through the time that you receive your results. So this presentation should hopefully give our current customers and uh, potential customers some insight into uh, how the process uh, for a new DNA kit or a new DNA test works at Family Tree DNA. Um, I do want to let you know that if you have any questions um, during today's presentation, you can go ahead and type them to me at any time uh, in your questions panel, in your uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, what I will probably do for today's presentation is hold most of the questions until the end of the presentation, unless I see something that I, uh, you know, need to be responded to right away, um, and uh, that way we'll have a full Q&A at the end, but you can feel free to go ahead and type your questions at any time so that you don't forget your questions, uh, and they will show up on my screen and they'll be stored for me to view at the end of the presentation. I do um, ask that you please try to keep your questions relevant to the topic of this webinar. Uh, I know that there are a lot of questions uh, that customers may, uh, you know, uh, want to be able to ask at any time. Uh, however, uh, you know, the topic of today's webinar is the uh, life of the Family Tree DNA Kit, and so please uh, do keep, try to keep your questions uh, to that topic. Also, uh, in case you're not aware, all Family Tree DNA webinars are recorded and archived for later viewing. So if you're um, I want to view this webinar again, you'll be able to do so, or if for some reason you have to leave the webinar early, uh, you will have access to the recording afterwards. Everyone who is registered for today's webinar uh, will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours after the live webinar uh, that will provide you with a link to the recording of the webinar. And uh, we also will always have the recording listed on the Family Tree DNA webinars page in our learning center, and I will provide you with that link uh, toward the end of the presentation. So with that introduction, uh, let's go ahead and begin. So the very first uh, thing that basically we're going to start with is ordering a DNA kit from Family Tree DNA. Uh, for those of you who are existing customers, certainly you've already been through this process, uh, but for those of you who uh, may uh, be attending today, tonight's webinar because you're interested uh, in Family Tree DNA, uh, this will um, give you some uh, uh, you know, brief information on how you can go ahead and get started with this process. Um, so first of all, our DNA kits are always available to be ordered either online or by phone. Uh, probably the vast majority of people do order online because you can go right to the Family Tree DNA website and be able to uh, place an order. But we do also have uh, customer support representatives available by phone. And uh, that phone number is 713-868-1438. And they are available Monday through Friday. Um, uh, to uh, go ahead and answer your phone calls. Now, answer uh, after you have gone ahead and placed an order for a DNA kit, that's really where, you know, this process really is beginning here. And so the very first thing that you as a customer, once you place your order, uh, will uh, have is an automated order confirmation email should be generated and sent to your email address that uh, you included on your order. And that it, uh, order confirmation email will specify the test that you ordered. Um, basically, it's a full order confirmation. Uh, and in addition to that, the next thing here is that your order confirmation email will also contain a unique kit number and an initial password for your personal MyFTDNA account. Now, each individual who tests with Family Tree DNA needs their own kit number. This is a question that we do get uh, fairly frequently. Um, customers who purchase and manage kits for multiple family members or friends, perhaps, um, each person whose DNA is actually tested by us or, who's, uh, or who, who has results with us needs their own separate kit number. The kit number is 
each individual's account number, basically, at Family Tree DNA. And you can see here that I have up on my screen here, this is uh, one of my uh, kits that I manage. And this is the kit number for uh, my brother whose uh, kit this is. And uh, so that kit number is unique to each person. You'll use that kit number to log in to your personal MyFTDNA account, which is where you'll later on review your results. And that kit number will also enable Family Tree DNA staff to be able to quickly find your account uh, should you uh, need to contact a customer support team for any reason. So that kit number is really important. It does multiple things uh, in our system. Now, that's the kit number, but then each uh, Family Tree DNA customer also initially gets uh, an, an actual physical kit. And so the DNA collection kit. So Family Tree DNA customers live all over the world, and so we do mail our DNA collection kits to our customers. The DNA collection kits are typically assembled and mailed within one business day after you actually place your order for your test. So we do try to get those kits out as quickly as possible, uh, you know, so that, you know, we get them into the mail as soon as possible to get to you. So what basically happens is that the morning after you've ordered your test, uh, we have, we print out uh, shipping labels, we print out postage labels, we print out barcodes with kit numbers, basically for all of the kits that were ordered the day before. The barcodes get affixed to several different items that are in the collection kits. Uh, that you'll be sending back to us later. And so those barcodes are used to help us make sure that everything that you return back to us with your DNA is that uh, easily identifiable and everything's barcoded so that they can be scanned later on. So after we assemble your whole kit, we, 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 we give you the swabs and we give you some other information that goes in it and they all go, all goes into the envelope. Uh, it's ready for the Postal Service, the United States Postal Service, to pick up from our office, which is in Houston, Texas, um, basically at the end of the business day. So within one business day, we typically uh, have those kits um, they sent to the post office, and then the post office takes it from there. Now, we do have one caveat to that time frame. Uh, we do have times when our order volume is extremely high, such as during sales, uh, like our holiday sale. And so during sales, it may actually take up to three business days for the kits to be sent out. And that's just because we have such a high volume of orders coming in. But generally, uh, during uh, you know, regular days when, when we don't have a major sale, we, we do our best to get those kits out. In most cases, those kits go out within just one business day. Now, we send the kits out within one business day, but when will, will your kit actually arrive at your house? Well, DNA collection kits are mailed as first class packages, okay? So it's not just a letter, it's actually a package. And the total amount of time that it will take for uh, to receive your kit really depends on where you live. Uh, that's a really big part of it. Um, and our kits also require special handling by the Postal Service because they are packages and they can't be processed by machine the way flat letters can. So it definitely takes a, a little extra time for the Postal Service because they have to hand uh, uh, process each of the kits that we mail out. So typically, customers within the United States should receive their kit within one to two weeks. Um, international customers, it could take up to three to four weeks. Some, some do receive them quicker, and it depends really on how international, basically how far outside the United States you are. Um, so, and then there are also some international locations that due to the customs regulations and more stringent customs in certain countries may actually take a little longer. It could actually take up to two months for the kits to be received. And uh, some of those locations are the Middle East, Russia, and some South American countries as well. So uh, do be aware of that. Um, so, you know, these are all typical times, and, and, and once we hand off to the, uh, the kit to the Postal Service, it's really up to the Postal Service at that point to go ahead and get, you know, the, the kit out to you. Um, so all kits are shipped with the U.S. Postal Service 
uh, tracking number, USPS tracking number, and within several days of your kit being shipped from our office, you should receive an email uh, with that tracking number from a service called stamps.com, which is what uh, we use to uh, go ahead and genera generate all that and uh, get uh, generate the postage and generate the tracking numbers and everything. So once you receive that email from stamps.com, uh, you should be able to track your kit through the uh, Postal Service website, which is just www.usps. Dot com or I believe also www.usps.gov. So hopefully that gives you uh, you know a better idea of kind of what to expect when when you actually order your kit and how long it will take to receive it. So now once you receive your kit in the mail, your physical kit, I uh, You'll open it up, and of course, there will be multiple items inside this kit. So our DNA collection kit includes a welcome letter, uh, instructions for swabbing and mailing your DNA samples back to us, uh, two cheek swabs, which you can see pictured here on the screen, uh, two tubes that also include a preservative liquid. You can see that on the screen here as well. And a clear plastic bag, which you'll actually seal the completed samples into. We also include a green release form, which is what uh, enables, uh, allows us to basically share your contact information uh, with your matches, your DNA matches, once we process your results, uh, and then um, and a return envelope. So this is essentially what's included in your kit. Um, now, some kits may also include an information sheet. Not every kit includes this. Um, typically, if you had, um, for some reason, your contact information wasn't provided on the order, or um, if you ordered a, a blank kit without an actual test being purchased yet on it, which that is something that it, we do uh, make available through customer support, um, or if the test uh, was ordered on invoice and not paid for yet. Uh, some of those situations are cases where we would actually include an information sheet. Um, now, if you do receive an information sheet within your kit uh, that asks for you know, contact information and payment info, and you've already paid for your test, um, then typically that happened by mistake and you can ignore it. Um, if you're not completely sure whether you can ignore that information sheet or not, you can contact our customer support team just to confirm. Uh, but you know, there, there are a couple of cases here and there uh, you know, where sometimes that information sheet does get included when it wasn't supposed to. Um, we've had a few customers ask about that. Uh, you know, typically, though, we only provide it uh, for kits that actually need to provide that information. Now, I, I do want to say for those of you who are first ordering your DNA kit, um, we do highly recommend that you really follow the instructions that are included with the kit very carefully. And you really want to ensure that you provide us with the best quality DNA samples that you can. And you can do that by following the instructions. Um, providing a good quality sample really helps us to be able to process your test successfully on the first try. Um, and it also usually enables us to run multiple tests on your original samples. So the better quality sample you send us, uh, the, hopefully the quicker we can process the results, and also um, that we you know, should have enough DNA uh, you know, for additional testing later in the future. Um, so if you were to order additional tests on your kit in the future, we always try to run those tests on the, your original samples first that we could because we store them, we do keep them in storage, and we'll typically only ask for new samples if for some reason we just can't get good results from the original ones. So this way you don't have to keep on sending us DNA and, and, and keep on waiting for you know, your DNA, DNA kits and DNA swabs to go back and forth in the mail. It should just be a one-time thing um, and, and uh, you know, only for, for people who uh, you know, really do a lot of testing with us, you know, typically should we have to send a second sample. But again, that, that, re, that assumes that you've sent us a really good sample to begin with. Now, once you do complete your DNA swabs, uh, you are going to go ahead and send your completed kits back to us following the instructions that were in the kit. 
So how long does it take for us to receive it back once you put that kit back in the mail? Again, it depends on where you live, okay? Um, so your kit will take approximately the same amount of time to arrive back at our office in Houston as it did to arrive to get to you in the first place. So again, for U.S. domestic customers, uh, basic, that's approximately one to two weeks. And for our international customers, it's about three to four weeks, uh, with the exception of, of the regions that I mentioned earlier, the Middle East, Russia, and some South American countries. And, and there may be a couple others here and there, um, but, you know, uh, that, that take longer, those could take up to two months. Um, sometimes uh, are the DNA samples coming back from, say, Australia and Australia, New Zealand uh, do take a while, not just due to customs, just because of the distance. So, you know, just be aware of that. Um, now, uh, due to the really high volume of kits that we actually receive back in our office in Houston, the local post office in Houston, basically Family Tree DNA's local post office, um, has set up a special process that they use to collect and deliver kits back to our office. Um, you know, most people, when they think of, you know, mail being delivered, you think of, you know, you know, one kit here, one kit there. You know, you might receive one kit in your mailbox, but we receive a ton of kits at the same time. So what happens is that once your kit arrives at our local post office in Houston, it actually gets added to a pretty large postal delivery bag, as you can see uh, on the screen here. And the post office may fill this bag, sometimes even several bags, before they actually deliver these bags to our office. So what can happen is that after your kit actually gets to our local post office, it may actually take a few more days for your kits to arrive at our office, at, at our own office, at the Family Tree DNA office. Now, if you return to your kit uh, to us with tracking on it, and we've had customers who um, who do this, and that's why we're, we're, we're making sure to mention this here, is that the Postal Service might actually or usually will mark your kit as delivered, will actually mark the tracking number as delivered, when they put your kit in this bag. It doesn't mean it's in our office yet. It's just at the post office. And so there may be several days of delay between the time that your kit is actually marked as received by the post office and when Family Tree DNA actually is able to mark it as received in our office. Um, so, so I just want you guys to all be aware of that because this, this is a very common question that comes up. Um, and so, you know, we really wanted to make sure that information is out there so that you guys kind of understand what, what's happening in this process. So now, once the kit does come back to our office, um, our shipping department begins the process of checking kits into our system. And this is a very careful process that we have to go through because we certainly want to make sure that everybody's DNA samples, um, you know, are correctly um, uh, are correctly checked in and everything checks out and, and, and your kit number matches and all your samples and your release form and the order and, you know, that everything matches up. So our shipping department has to um, basically open up the package that you send back to us. They carefully inspect each tube to make sure that they actually contain swabs, make sure that, make sure that you put the swabs into the tubes, um, and that they're still sealed with liquid in each tube. That liquid needs to stay in the tubes to make sure, um, to help preserve the DNA, to make sure that it doesn't get contaminated or go bad uh, quickly. And um, then they, they scan the kit number, the uh, barcode, uh, and, and then they have to go into your account and make sure that your uh, contact information and order information is correct and, uh, and, and, and update anything that needs to be updated. So, for example, if you actually had received one of those information sheets uh, because uh, for whatever reason either the payment wasn't made or we didn't have all the contact information, once you fill all that in, our shipping department, our, our people who open up the kits and check in the kits, they then have to go enter that information into the system as part of the kit check-in process. Uh, the other part that they do is that green release form that you sign that is what, like I said, it basically is uh, allowing us to uh, basically share uh, your, um, to compare you with other customers in the database and share your contact information with them and vice versa. 
there, there's some information on that as well. Um, your gender is selected on there. Uh, there's the male and female checkbox. Um, and uh, we also asked for your maternal and paternal countries of origin. And that information gets entered into your kit in our system, uh, into your uh, kit, meaning the account in our system, uh, at, 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 ch at kit check-in time. Now, after the ch whole check-in process is complete, uh, an email is automatically generated from the system to the email addresses on the kit to let you know that your kit has been received and checked in. So now, once your kit is checked in, what happens to the DNA samples? Do they just get, you know, walked right into the lab? No, it's not quite that simple. Again, you have to remember the volume of, of mail that we got and, you know, how many samples we, we got at a time. So basically what happens is that um, everybody provides two swabs and two vials, and we separate those two vials. We have one vial that, get, that does get delivered to the lab, so it'll go into uh, a box or a bucket with, with all the other vials that came in that day, and that will get uh, uh, given to the lab. And then we also, uh, your second vial goes into storage. And so this is the storage box here that all the vials get stored in. And um, you can see that the box itself has a barcode. So we are able to, um, and we put that in our system as well. So everything gets scanned with barcodes. Uh, and so we, we have in our system, we know exactly where your DNA sample, which has a barcode on the vial, uh, we know which box it's in because of the number and the barcode on the box um, in storage. And then there's a separate system that actually tracks where all the vials um, go within the lab when, once they get stored in the lab. Now, this box, the storage box, goes into a temperature-controlled sample room uh, or storage room for future use. So, again, this is how we make sure that we, you know, have plenty of your DNA on hand in case uh, we, for some reason, we, you know, can't get results from the first sample that goes to the lab. Um, you know, we always have a second sample in storage, or in case you uh, choose to order more testing later, we still have the original sample in the lab, and then we also have a second sample in storage. Now, once your DNA does go to the lab, how does processing happen? How does your DNA actually get processed? Well, one of the very first steps uh, is that your DNA has to actually incubate overnight. Um, basically, your DNA, uh, this, the, the sample you submitted, gets digested um, using uh, a chemical called proteinase K. And what this basically does is it starts to break down the the walls of your cells to release the DNA. And basically it allows us to be able to then go in and uh, run the tests on the DNA uh, at, at one, once they're basically out of the cell walls, okay? Now, uh, the DNA then uh, starts going through the extraction process. And there is uh, this machine here called the Beckman Coulter Extraction Robot. And uh, this robot uh, basically will take trays of DNA samples uh, and start actually uh, the process for extracting your DNA out of uh, the samples that you provided. Then once the DNA is actually extracted from the samples that you provided, those samples get stored into our robotic DNA freezer. And that robotic DNA freezer stores your DNA at negative 20 degrees Celsius or negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. So your extracted DNA is stored in cold storage, uh, while the unextracted DNA, the, the samples that actually went to, uh, into storage, uh, that, that just needs to be a temperature-controlled room, basically. Um, so it's only the extracted ones that really need to make sure that they're in the cold storage. Now, your extracted DNA sample will remain in this freezer until the lab's ready to begin processing the test that you ordered. So your, your uh, sample doesn't go immediately from the extraction robot to testing. It actually goes to storage first, and then uh, from there, 
um, a lab technician, uh, once they're ready to uh, test the type of test that you ordered, uh, they will uh, actually program the robotic freezer to pull the storage plates that has your DNA sample uh, that's, you know, uh, up next for testing. And what they do is they, they program it to pull a whole bunch of plates that have all the different samples that they need for the next test. Um, and so a whole bunch gets, uh, uh, you know, different people's samples basically get pulled out of the freezer at, at, at the same time. Now, after the, um, the, the uh, storage plates are pulled from, from the robotic freezer, they are actually taken back to that Beckman Coulter robot, the same one that did the extraction. And that robot is then programmed to draw a small amount of DNA uh, from the uh, basically the correct location in each storage plate. So the storage plates go on the, uh, on, on the robot, and then a little bit of your DNA is pulled out of your, what was your stored sample. And then that DNA is added to a new test plate. And the test plate is what we see here. And um, depending on the type of test, uh, the wells in each new plate could be filled to up to um, 96 different samples. Basically, each of the different holes in the plate, they're, they're called a well. Um, and so there's one sample for each um, for, for each well, typically. And uh, I mean, or, uh, definitely, they don't mix up the samples in the well. So sometimes, it, depending on the type of test, like for example, if they're uh, running a 37 marker Y DNA test, and they have to run separate panels, uh, pan markers 1 through 12, uh, 13 through 25, and 26 through 37, your DNA could actually be in three different wells on the plates if they were actually running the test that way. Um, I, uh, you know, I, it, it just depends on how the scheduling in the lab is. Sometimes they might have a whole plate of, of markers 1 through 12, and so then every single well will have a, a different person's uh, sample in it. So it just depends on how the lab is actually running the tests. Um, and then, so once your, a little bit of your DNA was extracted from that storage plate to put into the new test plate, your, uh, your extracted DNA, the rest of it that's not used, goes right back into that storage freezer. So there's a whole process to make sure that your DNA, uh, you know, you don't, basically we don't use up your entire DNA at one, you know, entire sample at one time. Uh, only a little bit is pulled from it, and then the remainder of it always goes back to the storage freezer. Okay, so um, after your DNA is actually pulled from your, uh, is plated or, you know, pulled, pulled from storage um, and on the test plate, then the, the lab processing, you know, really begins beyond that. Now, the exact steps for processing your DNA sample really depend on the type of DNA test that you order. Um, and so we can't go into full details in this presentation on how every single type of uh, a test is actually processed, but we can show you some of the equipment that we use. So here on this particular slide, uh, what you can see is that for, uh, for Y-DNA SNPs and STRs, we use a process called PCR or polymerase chain reaction to help amplify uh, your uh, DNA before um, before processing. Basically, it helps uh, create multiple copies of the DNA to make it easier uh, to be able to test it. Then uh, for, for Family Finder, uh, there's a machine called the TCAN Freedom Evo. And uh, this machine uh, is where the Illumina uh, microarray chips go into. And basically, these chips get stained. Uh, with different uh, different color chemicals and things um, to be able to uh, you know test different parts of, of the DNA. Uh, so this is a totally different type of machine that handles the family finder uh, than the uh, than, than the Y DNA testing is done. And then for um, uh, Big Y is processed on the uh, next generation uh, sequencing machines. Uh, and that, again, is a completely uh, different type of test here, is uh, the uh, high sec uh, machine. So, uh, you know, each type, of, uh, each type of test is processed on different equipment, is processed on 
uh, you know, it's, it may be processed at different times, and that's something that sometimes, you know, customers ask about is, you know, well, you know, this person received their Y-DNA results, you know, yesterday, how come I haven't received my MTDNA results, and we ordered at the same time, and it's because each of the different types of tests get processed on a different schedule, um, on, on different machines, and the tests take different amounts of time as well. So, um, you know, everything, again, you know, is pr pretty carefully scheduled in the lab to, you know, really try to make the best use of all of these different machines, uh, you know, as possible uh, to uh, get the uh, results, uh, you know, pushed out, uh, you know, to customers. So what happens after the uh, DNA uh, testing is actually done? Well, the last part of this, once your DNA has been tested and the results come, uh, you know, DNA comes off the machines and the results come out, well, we have a quality control process after that. We want to make sure that we actually got good results. And so the results are sent to our data analysis team uh, for verification and quality control before we upload them to your accounts. If your results pass the quality control review, which the vast majority of customers, uh, you know, results certainly do, um, then they'll be prepared for upload to your accounts and should be uploaded typically within a few days after that. Now, if our data analysts find a problem with your results, which does unfortunately sometimes happen, that the first try of a test for some reason doesn't quite go right the first time, then your results have to get flagged for further review. And then depending on the type of test that it was and the severity of the problem, um, that sometimes we may actually need to run an additional test on your sample to clear up the issue, or we may even need to completely rerun your test. So it really depends on the type of test, the type of problem, um, you know, but in some cases, uh, you know, we will need to do additional testing or rerun, which of course does, you know, end up taking longer for results. But our goal is always to provide customers with error-free results. So although rerunning does take additional time, you know, certainly we hope that you'll agree that accurate results, uh, you know, are certainly always going to be better than inaccurate ones. We never want to provide inaccurate results to customers or results that have problems. Uh, so, you know, we do take that extra time to really do a thorough quality review um, and to, you know, re redo the testing that's necessary to make sure that you do have, uh, you know, good, good results that you can rely on. So finally, uh, once your test is complete and your uh, results have passed the quality control stage and they've been approved for upload to your account, uh, they do get uploaded within a few days. And once your results are uploaded, you'll receive an automated email to notify you that your results are complete. And you can then sign in to your MyFTDNA account to view re your results and your matches, which is what everybody is waiting for, of course. Now, if you ordered more than one type of test at the same time, um, ex you know, as I just said before, expect to receive the results for each test at different times. And that's because each type of test is processed differently in the lab, on different machines, et cetera. And so, and you will receive a separate completion notice for each test that you order. So for example, if you ordered both Family Finder and Y-DNA, you you'll get separate completion notices for each of those tests. All right, so that basically what is, is the, the general process. So just to really quickly give you a summary review here. So the very first step is the customer orders their test. Next, Family Tree DNA prepares and ships the physical DNA collection kits. The customer will receive that DNA collection kit, complete the swabs following the instructions, and mail that kit back to Family Tree DNA in Houston. Once Family Tree DNA does receive that kit back in our Houston office after it goes through the postal service, uh, if it, we will go ahead and check that kit into the system and uh, an automated email will go out to the customer letting you know that we've received it. We then go through the various lab processing steps to process your test and get results. Uh, then we have to go through our quality control process and finally, you get to access your results in your My FTDNA accounts. So, um, 
after you receive your results, you might need some assistance with understanding them and really learning how to make the most use of them. Genetic genealogy is certainly new to a lot of people who, well, especially if this is your first time doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, although we certainly do uh, try to make the results, you know, as easy to understand as we can, uh, you know, certainly, you know, sometimes it helps to, uh, you know, get a, with a little bit of assistance with, you know, really, you know, what exactly you're looking at and, and how do you make use of the information that we're providing to you. So we provide many free resources to help you with this. So number one, um, this webinar is part of a series of webinars uh, that we have been giving, and all of our webinars are recorded and archived um, in our Learning Center on the webinars page. And they're available, the recordings are available to view anytime. And so our archives currently contain webinars that range from beginner to advanced, and they cover a variety of topics basically for each of our core tests, which are Y-DNA, MT-DNA, and Family Finder, which is our autosomal DNA test. Um, and so you can find all different types of webinars that hopefully, um, you know, will we'll cover what you're looking for. Um, I've done my best to really try to cover the gamut, uh, you know, of, of what we have available. Um, the other thing you can do is sign up for our announcements list uh, to be notified by email about our future webinars um, and uh, whether they be live or recorded webinars. And all of the webinar uh, information is found on the webinars page of our Learning Center, and that's at www.familytruedna.com slash webinars. Then we also have our Family Tree DNA Learning Center, uh, which basically includes frequently asked questions and articles about many different topics related to our tests. So, you know, it, sometimes if you just have a quick question that you want an answer to, you can go to the Learning Center and see if you can find, you know, a, a fact or an article, you know, with that particular question if you're not looking to, you know, sit through a whole presentation. Um, and, of course, those, um, uh, the facts and articles in our Learning Center also range from beginner to advanced. So, uh, you know, certainly a ton of information available there. Uh, so to get to that, it's at familytreedna.com slash learn. Uh, you may also want to consider joining our discussion forums where you can ask questions and get answers from other customers. Basically, there it's it's for users or customers to be able to communicate with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, and if you don't want to ask questions, you can just read and learn. Uh, you know, you can just, you know, sit back and you know, read other people's posts and, and, you know, just learn what they have there. Uh, if you're somebody who is already experienced with genetic genealogy, maybe you can help out other customers at our discussion forums. So, you know, if you haven't checked those out yet, uh, please do so. And the forums can be found at, uh, there's no www in front of it, it's just forums.familytreedna.com. And finally, last but not least, um, our customer support team is available to answer questions by phone and email, and you can find our contact information, hours, um, and you can open an online support request on the contact, the main contact page of our website, um, and that's at familytreedna.com slash contact.aspx. So those are our main uh, support, uh, you know, and uh, resources that are out there. Um, there, there, you know, are certainly, you know, other other things out there. There, there are various blogs that people post and other forums, you know, outside, outside of ours, uh, you know, places on social media, on, on Facebook. We have our Facebook page. There's Facebook groups that, you know, people participate in to talk genetic genealogy, uh, you know, so there's certainly, uh, you know, plenty, plenty of resources out there uh, for you to get assistance with, uh, you know, learning about your results or, or you know, how to, how to um, you know, fully work with your results. So that concludes our presentation today, The Ideal Life of a Family Tree DNA Kit. I certainly hope that this information today was useful for everybody to, uh, you know, gain an a understanding of uh, kind of the, you know, general process that your kit goes through, uh, you know, especially for the first time when you're first ordering a kit, uh, you know, from the time that you order until the time that you receive your results. And, and actually, we talked about a little bit what to do after you receive your results as well, um, and that's all the different learning resources that we have.
So with that, um, I do have a few questions that have been uh, posted uh, to the questions panel here. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at those and uh, see what's been posted and see what I, I can answer. Uh, if you have questions that you have not posted yet, please feel free to go ahead and do those. Um, I do see that some of the questions are asking some uh, technical, uh, you know, lab details that I'll, I'll tell you right now, I might not be able to give a specific answer for. Um, so because I'm, I'm not a lab technician, so, um, but I will uh, do my best to, uh, you know, answer these questions as best I can. And let me see what just happened with my questions panel. There we go. Okay, so um, a couple of people asked uh, about, you know, whether there's a, a chance of mixing up with another person's DNA sample or, you know, cross-contamination between machines and things like that. Um, so, again, well, I, I don't want to try to pretend that I know the precise answers to these questions. Um, I will tell you that I, I have, you know, certainly been given a lab tour by the lab staff, and I can tell you that they certainly, there are, there are specific lab processes in place that to help, you know, uh, avoid, you know, cross-contamination either between machines or between samples. Um, basically, all of the, um, uh, uh, from my recollection, uh, all of the, um, basically, like, the little pipettes that are used even by the robots to extract DNA from the samples, um, they're, they're not reused right away for somebody else's DNA sample, if at all. And, again, this is where I, I don't want to, uh, you know, speak incorrectly, so I will say that, uh, from my recollection, they're either discarded right away or they're things that are thoroughly washed, but I think they're actually discarded, if I remember correctly. So you're not going to have some, like a pipette that picked up, uh, or one of those, um, uh, you know, pipettes in the machine that picked up somebody's, you know, DNA and immediately picked up somebody else's. And so, you know, these machines are designed to be able to handle many samples at the same time you know, without contaminating between the different samples. Um, the, the sample trays where the DNA is, and, and I know it looks like the DNA is so close to each other in those wells, um, but, you know, those wells, you know, a very little amount of DNA actually goes into those wells, and they're, they're deep enough that it's not that they're accidentally going to spill over from one to the other or anything like that. So, um, you know, there, there's definitely a lot of those processes in place to make sure uh, that those, you know, contamination issues don't happen. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, a couple of people, oh, somebody asked, is it possible to have DNA samples destroyed and not stored? It is possible, yes. You will have complete control over your samples, and so if for some reason you don't want the DNA sample to, you know, remain in storage, you can send an email request. We do need it in writing, and email writing is fine. It, can't, it just can't be a phone request, verbal. We need it documented. Um, you can send an email request to customer support and request that the samples be destroyed. Um, we will send back uh, an, an email back to you confirming that you understand that once those samples are destroyed, we obviously can't get them back. It's literally the, the samples are dumped down the drain, and everything is thoroughly washed out. So, um, you know, so, so, you know, you, you'll be just, you know, asked to confirm that you understand that, you know, if you do want to do future testing, that you will need to provide new samples to us. Um, and then, yes, we will actually go ahead and destroy those samples. So um, just send an email request if that's something that you need. Um, a question, does a lab want to be notified about the death of an account that I'm administering? So, uh, you know, yeah, th there are unfortunate situations where people who have been tested with family treaty and I have passed away. Um, and so uh, you certainly can, if you would like, send an email to customer support to notify them that the DNA donor for a particular um, kit uh, is deceased, and then both the uh, accounts will be marked that way. Nobody can see that. That's just for internal staff. Um, we'll be able to uh, put a notation on the account saying that they're deceased, and then um, they can also be marked as deceased in the internal lab systems, uh, which will um, help prevent 
um, uh, you know, s certain parts of the process from happening. And, and what happens especially is that if somebody's managing the account of somebody who is deceased, um, you know, you, you may still have enough DNA that you can order another test on that. And so by actually having us mark the ac account as deceased, if for some reason we can't get good results from that test, um, rather than actually send out a replacement kit, we'll know not to do that because we know the person's deceased. So, you know, it's, it, you don't have to do that, but if you want to, you certainly can. Um, okay, so Robert asked if the results are easy to read and understand. So, um, as I said, Robert, you know, it's something where we basically provide you with a, a list of matches um, in our system, and we basically give you names and email addresses of the people who you match. Um, what, you know, may, what you may need to learn about a little bit is that we provide more information than just that, hey, this person matches you. Um, you know, they might match at, say, a certain number of markers on the Y-DNA test. Or they might, you know, match on a certain number of centimorgans on the Family Finder autosomal test. And that's the type of stuff where, you know, if you haven't done genetic genealogy before, you may not understand what it means to match on, say, 33 out of 37 markers or to match on, you know, 200 centimorgans, um, you know, just, you know, immediately from looking at your results. And so that's the type of information uh, where, you know, certainly the webinars that I've done before on how to read and understand your results um, will help you with that, and there are also those facts and articles in the Learning Center, and those, of course, are also questions that you can, um, you know, submit to our customer support staff, uh, you know, if you need additional assistance. Um, but definitely check out the Learning Center first, because a lot of times the information that you might be looking for, for some basic things like that, um, you know, may be right there in the Learning Center, and then you don't have to wait for a response from customer support. Um, so, you know, the higher volume of email that customer support receives, unfortunately, you know, it can take a little bit of time to, to get a response uh, sometimes because of the high volume of email. So, you know, you can sometimes help yourself, uh, you know, and not have to wait for that response, uh, you know, by, by just looking around the resources that we provide. Uh, let's see. And then there was another question. Um, is, uh, is there a way to track if a sample has passed the quality check? Um, not from your MyFTDNA account. Uh, we do have some internal ways to see whether a sample, uh, you know, has, has, has finished testing and has gone to, you know, to quality control. Um, if, if, a, and if a sample uh, failed the quality control, um, we should be able to see that. But right now we don't have, like, a step-by-step, -step, uh, you know, a kind of checklist within MyFTDNA. Um, right now there's, there's a lot of... Uh, Kind of internal stuff that it's it's not as easy to actually you know kind of do a little a little checklist that you guys are able to see. Um, but if you're concerned if if your uh, test has gone past its original estimated completion date, you can certainly contact our customer support team and uh, you know ask for you know a status of the test and see if there's uh, you know just a you know general delay or if there was a problem with the test or if it had to be rerun or anything like that so that's something we can tell internally okay okay um a couple of questions here um were also about you know status of tests and you know should you know should you check on things um there there's always an estimated completion date um in your my ftdna account and, you know, so take a look at that. There's, there should be an awaiting results uh, a button or, or tab in your MyFTDNA account that gives you an estimated completion date. Um, if, a, if a test does need to get, does get delayed past that, we will push back those dates. Um, and right now, the, the dates are just pushed back in your account. We, and, and they're basically kind of done in bulk. So basically everybody who had a specific you know, completion date, um, you know, that, that the results don't seem to be, you know, coming in by, we'll basically push all those back at the same time. So, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, what, why couldn't, you know, why, why couldn't the staff just send me an email to let me know that this has been delayed? Um, you know, you do have to keep in mind that we, we are really dealing with a high volume of stuff. And even though, you know, certainly we don't have, you know, tons of failures and things like that, um, you know, it, it, is, it is hard for us to, you know, we, we can't have somebody kind of, you know, personally email you to tell you that something's been delayed. So just keep an eye on your MyFTDNA page, especially around the time of the estimated completion date. And if... Um, if your test does get delayed and, and you want to understand why, you can contact customer support and they'll be able to look that up for you.
Um, okay, and uh, there was another question here about somebody who's deceased. So, yeah, if you're managing the account of somebody who is deceased, um, you're still going to go ahead and be able to use that account and get all the information. Um, just, you know, notifying the lab or notifying Family Tree DNA that somebody's deceased basically just marks it that way in our system so that, you know, we don't basically send out new DNA samples to you, you know, to say, hey, we need more DNA to, you know, process, you know, another test that you ordered or something like that. Um, it's really just kind of informational. It's not going to stop uh, you from being able to manage um, that information. Okay, and, and, and you can just manage it the same way that you have been, um, you know, not, not, nothing changes with that respect. I had another question here. Can, can somebody bank an extra sample, for, for example, for an elderly person? Um, you can actually. If you, if you have somebody who, if you're ordering a kit for an older relative, um, or if you already have a kit and, you know, you think you may want to order more tests in the future and, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you have a sample on hand, contact customer support about that. Um, you know, those, those are the kinds of things that need to go through a customer support team. There's not just a button that you can push online to say, you know, send me another, you know, swab for this kit. Um, but, yeah, contact customer support team, and, and you can discuss it with them. And usually there's no problem with sending additional swabs, um, especially in, in the case where somebody is um, uh, older and you want to be able to make sure you have enough DNA on hands. Um, I just got a question. Does Family Tree DNA test hair samples? No, we currently do not. Uh, apparently, we tried a long time ago, and we just were not getting uh, enough results for the types of tests that we were doing. There's just not enough DNA. Um, we also, you know, some people, um, you know, think you can just do a clipping of hair, and that actually doesn't work. You actually need the root of the hair. So, um, but there's really not enough DNA in, in a root to um, be able to uh, do the types of tests that we're doing, especially the family finder test. That really needs a lot of DNA. Okay, so um, that, I think, basically concludes uh, the questions. I, I do hope that I did, uh, you know, answer most of them uh, to, to the best of my ability. Like I said, a, a few of the questions that were posted here were really specific about the lab processes, and uh, that, that is, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to speak out of turn on that, and I don't have a lab technician uh, standing nearby to be able to answer those properly. So, um, you know, if, if you have a, you know, specific question about that that you really, uh, you know, you know, would like, you know, the answer to, you can certainly try to contact customer support about that and, and they'll be able to, you know, take the time to, to get that answer for you um, if they can. Um, you know, certainly there are always going to be certain parts of a lab process that lab process that might be a little bit proprietary, um, you know, but if it's something that's not a proprietary, uh, you know, type part of the process, you know, certainly they'll, they'll try to get that information for you. So I want to thank you all for attending tonight, um, and I know uh, some of you uh, who are attending tonight had, had been registered for this presentation for quite a while, and, and, and it had to get rescheduled a couple of times, or more, more than a couple of times probably, so I really appreciate you guys uh, sticking by and uh, Looking forward. Fin glad I was finally able to give this presentation tonight, and we got past uh, the other uh, hurdles that we had uh, to get to this presentation. And I definitely hope that this information, you know, was helpful for you. And you know, again, just understanding our general process of how things work at Family Tree DNA. Um, and so, with that, I would like to bid you all a, a very enjoyable rest of your evening. And um, uh, I certainly hope to see you all at a future Family Tree DNA webinar. Uh, watch for the uh, follow-up email to come out uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours after this webinar ends. Uh, for those of you who uh, were pre-registered and attending live, and uh, that will have the link to the recording uh, so that in case anybody wants to watch this again. All right, so take care, everybody. Have a great night. Bye-bye.